All right. Happy Tuesday, everybody. We are live. We're going live. We're live. We're live. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, <clears throat> happy Tuesday. Happy InDesign Tuesday. As many of you know that follow me, you know that I dedicate Tuesdays to, um, to InDesign. And uh, this Tuesday is no different. Today I have something that's kind of been in the back of my head. It's on my list of topics that I finally want, finally got to. And it's basically um, how to handle a word exchange, <laughs> meaning someone sends you a Word document, but they've already formatted it for you so you don't have to. Um, and, and of course, the, you know, most InDesign users would just dismiss that, delete all their, their formatting and move on and reformat the document. But in a situation where you're working with someone on a regular basis and you're, you've trained them, so to speak, on how to format the document or maybe what styles to use, then that could be a helpful thing if they're like if they're your writer, or they're the person that's that's uh, helping you. That could be a helpful thing. But if it's just a random document that's been formatted and it's got styles in it, you can either dismiss those styles, which we're going to show you how to do, or you can actually utilize them and map them to your InDesign styles. What you probably don't want to do is import a Word document with the Word styles without doing this tip, because what that will do is introduce new styles to your InDesign document that you probably don't want. So let's cover all this. Thanks everyone for being here. Thanks Valdera, Colleen. I know Valdera is from another country. I can't remember which one. Colleen's from South Africa. There are loyal people that are always here every day. Uh, Jeanette, uh, Nasser, welcome. Uh, Judy, Judy Morris is in the house. Joy, Cindy. Elaine, uh, Nagy or Nagy, uh, Mo, Victoria, Charles, and Chris has, an, has a, please show how to extract the images from the Word file as well. So we can maybe cover that too. All right, so let's go in and let's go to the computer and take a look at some of these things. Um, and John, John Glass is saying, I so need this video, I can't wait. So let's dive in. All right, so in front of me right now is, uh, I've got InDesign open in the background, but what you see in front of me is my, uh, my browser open to Adobe Stock where I've got, uh, I've searched for templates for InDesign because, you know, I, I too get tired of using the same ones over and over again. So I found this template. Um, it's for like a, a green newsletter. So whether it's green energy or just like the color green or gardening or whatever, I kind of like the style of it. So I downloaded that template. That's the one we're going to be working with today. So if I pop over to InDesign, in other words, if you say, well, where'd you get this document from? That's where I got it from. Uh, so I downloaded the template, double clicked on it. And of course it comes in with no images and I should do it this way. It also comes in with just Lorem Epsom type, but you'll notice that the type has been formatted. That's because most of the templates from InDesign also includes styles. So there's a bunch of paragraph styles. I didn't create these. These came from the template. So there's one called headline. There's one called title title article, title article two, uh, so forth and so on. And off, at first glance, you aren't going to know which style is which. You're not going to know um, what styles you want to use and which ones have already been used until you go play around. So for example, I don't know which style this is, but if I double click on it with my type tool, oh, that's title article, got it. I don't know which one this one is. Oh, that's body text to left gradient. <laughs> okay, this is most likely body text, got that. Um, and if I scroll through the document, oh, there's some center type, body text centered, um, body text intro centered, uh, so forth and so on. So I've gone through and kind of figured out which styles I wanted to use for my incoming Word document. Um, and again, I'm not going to use all of them because I don't need all of them, but it's nice to go through and click through and either make a mental or written note which style does what or which style you like so that you can implement that when you bring in or bring in a Word document or just continue working with the template itself. So the other thing I've done is I've scrolled down and on page four, 
I've gone ahead and deleted some of the sample text. So I've created my own frames. And if I get out of preview mode, they're all linked together. So let me zoom out a little bit so you can see that. I'll zoom out a little bit more. Here we go. Uh, so you can see that I've got uh, this frame linked to this frame, linked to this frame, linked to these three frames, linked to this last frame on page six. All right, so that's the, those are the placeholders I've built for the Word document that's coming from my writer, from the person that's, that's giving me the Word file. So I've already allocated the space for it. Now I just need the Word file itself. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select this first frame. I'm going to go back to uh, preview mode because we don't really need to see all the placeholders at this point. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to my file menu and choose place. Now, normally you can drag and drop. You know, there's lots of ways to get things in InDesign, but for this, you do want to use place. Um, when we do a place and we go find the Word document, here's the magic. There's a checkbox that is off by default. If you don't have this turned on, it'll just import your Word document. It'll bring in whatever styles it, it the Word document had. It'll use whatever fonts the Word document had, and you'll have a mess on your hands. <laughs> this is why people freak out when they get a Word file. Oh my God. The style normal all over your document, all these weird fonts. InDesign is going to complain about all the missing fonts that you probably don't have. So this is where you definitely want to enable show import options. So now, because I have that checked, when I select my Word file and then say open, it's going to bring up this window. This window normally would not be here if you had that box unchecked. And this is where the magic happens. So this is where you get to pick and choose what's coming in from that Word file that you want or don't. So do I want to include the table of contents text? Maybe they made a table of contents. And because I'm putting this in a bigger document, I don't need a table of contents. I'm going to make my own. Maybe they included in an index. Because this is going in a bigger document, I'd probably want to make my own index. So I probably don't want theirs. Uh, footnotes and endnotes. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Go ahead and make those. Um, use typographer quotes instead of the inches symbol that they probably have typed if they didn't know what they were doing. Now, you have, you have three choices here. This is the one that most people would probably want <laughs> if they want to just say, I got this. I'll bring it in. I'll take care of it. I don't need your help. So if you just want to say, remove all the formatting, then it's just going to come in as standard text. And that's great. That's a great option when you have no idea what the person did or you don't care what they did. You're going to bring it in and you're going to reformat it completely yourself. That's the, that's the first option you would use. But if you say, like I said, I know this person, they've used style sheets. They kind of have a little bit, of, little bit going on. They kind of know what style sheets are. The only difference is they probably didn't use the same names that I'm using because I just got them from a template. So let's go ahead and say preserve. We're going to go to option number two. We're going to say preserve the styles and formatting from the text and tables. And uh, the person that asked about the graphics, you can import inline graphics because that's what they would be inside of a Word file. Once they import, they're going to be embedded inside your InDesign document, unlike the previous graphics you would normally place, which would be a link, and they would be in line. Now, that means they will move around with the text. You can, do, you, can un, you can disconnect the inline graphics. You can either cut and paste them right back in so they're separate. You can move them around your, yourself, or um, you can unanchor them because that's what they would really be. Now, this is, I'm not worried about any graphics because I know this Word file doesn't have any, so I'm not going to import the graphics uh, that came with it. But for the person that asked earlier, that's how I would handle the inline graphics. I'd go ahead and bring them in, and then I would deal with them once they got in. I'd disconnect them from the text if I wanted to, and then place them normally where I'd want them to be. All right, the, the magic option that we really came here for today is this very last one. Customize style import. And it's not obvious what that means. But this is really what this, this whole lesson is all about. When you check this option, you're going to get a style mapping um, choice. And that's what you want. You're going to bring up that style mapping option. 
And what this will cleverly do for you, or let you do, is it will peek inside the Word file and show you what styles are there. Now, not necessarily meaning that they use them all, but these are all the styles that are in that Word document on the left-hand side. Perfect. Without even looking at the Word file, I know what's there now. And more importantly, sorry about that. More importantly, on the right-hand side, it lets me map those styles to my styles. So, normal, a hideous word default. Word, if you don't make a style and you don't format your text, all the text comes in as normal. So what I would want to do is I would want to change norm anything that's formatted normal. I'm going to assume that's body text. And so therefore, I'm going to use my body text left. Okay, automatically convert anything normal into my style. Heading two, I don't know, that could mean a smaller heading than title. I have no idea. So I'm going to use body text intro, which is my heading that I want to use. Title. Well, okay, I'm assuming that's big text. I'm going to use title article two because this is for an article, not the main subject of maybe a section of the newsletter or magazine or whatever it is. Quote. Well, okay, I have a quote style, but it's not called quote. It's called quotes with an S. So I'm just mapping that. Last one, subtitle. And for subtitle, I'm going to use body text center. So again, I'm taking whatever they did in Word and mapping them to my styles. So therefore, I don't get their styles and I get their text perfectly formatted to what I want it to be. Now, if I had character styles, I would also be able to map these. So they had a character style called title character, headline to character, and quote character. I don't think I have any. Yeah, I don't have any character styles in this template, but I have a choice. I can either cancel, go build some, now that I know what's going to come in, or, no big deal, it will come in and it will generate a new character style, and then I can format it after the fact. So that's probably what I would do in this case. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. Now, here's another tip. If you get documents from that person all the time, then you can even save this as a preset. And that way, you get the ability to just choose their preset. So I can save this as a preset from that Word guy. Okay, so now I've got a preset. Anytime I get a document from that Word guy, I just switch to it and the style mapping happens automatically. Now it's keeping in mind if they're going to be consistent, which I probably still check. But anyway, it will set up all of this for you and you can still go check the mapping at any given time. All right, so now with that said, I'm going to go ahead and click OK, which will do the import. And there was one missing font substituted for the default font, no problem. Go ahead and close. And now this text is ready to come in. I'm going to go ahead and place it inside my first frame. And it will beautifully place the rest of the text with all the formatting, with all the right fonts, with all the right styles. I don't get any weird styles on the other side uh, or my style panel. I just have their text formatted the way I want. And even if I scroll down here, this was a, um, a quote and it's even formatted with the quote style. Now, these were... Um, I know this because I wrote this document, but these were really call outs to insert images, but I'm using them as subheads for this demonstration. So here's the title of the article. Uh, oh, let me zoom in that way. There's the title of the article. Uh, again, I formatted this using the uh, body text center and each, for, each, head, each paragraph is formatted with body text to left and each subhead, which, or whatever I would call these, are body text intro. And the other thing was that was kind of nice, wherever they did, let's see if I can find an example. I saw one earlier. Yeah, wherever they did bold, it not only, it didn't like, because in, in Word, you're just clicking B to make something bold, even though the font may not have a bold. Here, it's actually using the bold of that font. So it's converted that as well. So it's using my font and the bold of that font. So now we're, the only place where that would get you in trouble is if they used a bold or italic and therefore, and you don't have a bold or italic for your body font. 
which that would be rare, but that could happen. All right, so that's pretty much how to accept the Word file that's been formatted using styles and not go crazy because you're mapping their styles to yours. And again, if you don't want to even deal with that, then just bring it in and strip away all the formatting. That way, InDesign won't keep bringing in all, because let's say you're getting Word files from five different people. Can you imagine how many different sets of styles you would get if you just accepted the defaults and imported the Word file? So at a minimum, strip away the um, stuff that, that, at a minimum, strip away all the formatting. Or if, again, if you're working with someone that's kind of, kind of got it together, you can import using styles. All right, I hope you got something out of this. Um, will it also carry over underlined words, Cindy? I don't know. I guess I could go do a test, but I have not tried underlined since I haven't used underlined text in, in ages. So I don't know what the equivalent of that would do. Um, but that would be a quick test that you can try yourself. Let me let us know. Um, I don't know the answer to that one. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Yes, it is amazing. It's one of the best kept formatting import secrets. All right. Da, 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 da. Uh, Elaine saying, can I make the word file available as a practice run? Um, I could, but it's just a matter. It's just text formatted with styles and word, but it, message me offline. I can send you the file if you really need it. All right. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for, for thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Uh -huh.